Hello, Stuart McPhee here. A very common question we get from Metastock users is how, when they conduct, when people conduct an exploration, they find a number of stocks that appear in their final results list haven't traded for some time. So they find that very frustrating and perhaps a little bit misleading that they'll get a list of securities, but uh, every now and again they'll get a few that uh, simply haven't traded for some period of time, and of course they don't want them appearing in the results. So they want to know how can they eliminate uh, those securities and ensure that only those securities that appear in the list in the final results have traded in the last trading period. And we came up with a very simple idea called a date indicator. And there's a couple of ways that we can implement this. The first thing we'll do is we'll go into the indicator builder and create this date indicator. So I'll click new and I'll call it in fact, no other, no better word than date Indicator. Now the formula is quite simple and I'm just going to use the functions uh, key over here to go and grab the formula. If we click on functions and on the left under categories we select uh, date and time, we're going to use a few of these here. So the first one we'll use is day of month. Now because I'm doing this recording on the 30th of June 2008, I want to ensure that the day of month equals 3-0. And we'll go back and grab the function for month. There it is there. Okay, we want the month to equal six and we want the year to equal 2008. Now, that's it. What I could do is, okay, there it is in the indicator builder. I could close that, go into my explorer and perhaps get an exploration I wish to run and here's uh, one here called triple zero. We'll just double click on that to edit now I've just done this up for the purposes of this video, it's a very simple uh, explorer and if we go to the filter tab we'll notice we're just looking for all those securities whose closing price is above the 30 day simple uh, moving average um, of the closing price and that the closing price is less than 10. What I can also include in here now is called and go to my functions, custom indicators and down here somewhere starting with the letter D will be my date indicator Sure enough, there it is there. Click OK, and now my date indicator appears in the filter for my exploration. So if I was to go ahead and run this explorer now, and I'll just run it over the um, top 500 stocks on the Australian Securities Exchange, we'll now find that as part of the uh, filter, we've got this date indicator, and I now have a lot of confidence that all the stocks here, their last trading day was in fact the 30th of June because I've stipulated that that is a requirement for the filter. Now, before I go, the obvious uh, condition with the use of this indicator is, and it is a little restriction, that every day you would need to edit this indicator and adjust the values before you run your exploration. But of course, the good thing is you're eliminating those stocks that haven't traded for some time or haven't traded for a week or whatever. You're totally eliminating those and ensuring with great confidence that only those that have traded recently and met your criteria appear in the results list. Now there's a slightly easier way of doing this. And if I close the indicator builder and go back into the explorer, I can edit the existing explorer and perhaps remove what I've just done. Now a simpler way of doing this, although not 100% accurate, is to use the columns. Now I've got some information in column A and column B. How about if I go to column C, and what I want to appear in column C is the day of the month. So if I click on uh, the name, I'll just put day, and functions, I'll go ahead and get date and time, day of month. So now, for all the securities that make it through into my final results list, the last day of the the last trading day, well that day of the month will appear in column C. So if I click OK and run that exploration again, we'll now find that beside the closing price and the volume, in column C will be the day of the month. And notice that there are a few that have made my criteria, met my criteria, but simply haven't traded for a number of days potentially. So of course using the column header, I can sort those out and have all the 30s down here, so I'm confident they are all have traded uh, recently, but these ones have not, because the day of the month is perhaps last week or however long ago.
Now, why I said it's not 100% guaranteed is because you just want to be careful when you look at the chart that this 30 here doesn't refer to the 30th of the previous month or one of three months ago, of course, last year. So it's uh, an easier way of doing that because you don't have to go in and edit the date indicator all the time, but you just certainly would want to make sure when looking at the chart that the last month in the chart, of course, is the current month. Anyway, as I said, that's a question that a lot of people ask us, and there's just a couple of simple ways of working around that and uh, hopefully helping you with your Metastock.